Bonjour chérie, je m'appelle Maya et je déteste les tomates. J'aime les croissants. Vous aimez les croissants ou je vais au fait des croissants? Who am I kidding? This is a walking. That's a bit better. Okay, good day, good folks. Today we are making croissants and not only a few, we're making a lot of croissants because today we're going to be testing six different recipes. Yeah, you heard me. I've completely lost it. So the recipes we're going to be doing is Dominic Ansel's from his masterclass, Joshua Wiseman's from his uh, homepage, but he also had just the same recipe in a YouTube video, Julia Child's like classic recipe, Republique, the bakery and like cafe restaurant place uh, from their cookbook, uh, Claire Sabbat's from her cookbook, and lastly we're doing a Food 52 version. Okay, first things first, we're gonna do the who, what and why. So, who made the recipe, like what are they known for? Uh, what makes the recipe different from the others? And why did I choose that recipe? Who, what, why? First one up is Dominique Ansel. He is the one and only creator of the Cronut. He's a very famous patisserie chef and that is who. What? Well, the recipe is from his masterclass and it uses a uh, Levain starter, so like sourdough in the dough. And why? Well, it was kind of a different recipe and since he is the father of the cronut, which is a donut and a croissant, he should be pretty darn good at making croissants. Next one up is Joshua Wiseman, our resident YouTube chef. Why did I choose him? Well, I kind of see him as the everyman. And what is the recipe? Well, it's pretty basic, everyday, anyone could do it, no fuss, uh, croissant recipe. It's very basic. Why? Well, that's kind of why. I wanted this as a like ground zero baseline recipe. Next up is Julia Child. Julia Child, not Merle Streep, is the mother of French cuisine in America. She brought it over from France and she's made a bunch of cooking shows and cookbooks. She is a very big culinary figure. Uh, basically, Julia's recipe was a recipe that had kind of like no fuss ingredients and uh, had very short time. So why this was chosen was it was no fuss again it seemed too simple to be true kind of next up is republique republique is a cafe and a restaurant and bakery in los angeles uh, i chose them well look at their instagram of course i was going to choose them okay uh, and their recipe used a like sponge they called it that sat in room temperature before kind of interesting that's why we chose them Claire Savitz, of course, Claire Savitz has to be in a bakery showdown. She is a chef, obviously. She has her own cookbook. She used to work at Bon Appetit and she's amazing. Watch her on YouTube. Like, what am I even talking about? Of course, go watch Claire if you haven't. Uh, she ha uses spelt in her croissants. Mm -hmm. And why I chose her? Obviously, I was going to choose Claire. It's not even a question. Yes, yeah, of course. And Food52. Food52 is a website that posts a bunch of recipes. They also sell a bunch of kitchen stuff and they just generally make food related content. Their recipe is vegan. So kind of a curveball, a bit different. That's why I chose it to shake things up a bit. Can a vegan butter stand up to norm butter? We'll see. I'm in uni, so. I always have a hypothesis about what's going to happen. That's what we learn to do, basically. We're writing papers all the bloody time. So, yeah, okay. So my method of... Wow, I'm really talking like a uni student. <laughs> my method to come out with a hypothesis is how much butter is in this croissant. Because butter is what makes everything good. Okay, so what I did, I went through all the recipes, added all of the butter in the recipe and then I divided it by the amount of croissants that 
the recipe predicts that you're going to make. So, for example, if uh, a recipe calls for 100 grams butter in total, both in the dough and the lamination, and you can make five croissants from that dough, you're going to have a butter content of 12 grams per croissant. Okay, you with me? So, I believe that the croissant with the least amount of butter should be the worst, and the one with the most amount of butter should be the best. It's a very loose hypothesis. So this is the ranking, and also the Food 52 one is obviously vegan butter, but I'm going to count it as if it was normal butter, okay? So the worst one, according to my calculations, with 9.42 grams butter per croissant is Julia Child. In fifth place, is with a 20.87 grams butter is Dominique Ansel. 21.38 grams butter per croissant is Food 52. Republique with 25.42 grams butter. Second place goes to Joshua Weissman with 27.17 grams butter with a whopping 47.88 grams butter per croissant. It's the one and only Claire Savitz. So that's my prediction of the best ones. We're obviously going to taste all of them at the end of this. So more or less all of the recipes were the same. You mix the ingredients and make the dough, you let it proof, you roll it out, you proof some more, you make a butter block, you put the butter block in, you roll it, you let it proof, you roll it some more, you let it proof. Yeah, you get the gist. You then shape it, and you all the stuff. So all of the recipes were more or less the same. So I'm just going to show you some mixed clips. Uh, so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So I got my croissants, so since I was doing all this in three days, some of them were baked on day two, some were baked on day three, that day was yesterday. So they're not like super fresh, so I'm not going to be judging them on like dryness, but we're going to be judging them on a few things. Number one, how they look, do they look like a croissant? That's important. Number two, I know that some of that could be on me for not being good at shaping them, but I followed what the recipe said, okay? Number two. Uh, how have the layers, have they separated properly? Is it light and fluffy? That's important. And number three, of course, the taste. Does it taste good? Does it taste like a proper croissant? So that's what we're judging it on. So yeah, let's get started. Cheers. First out, Dominique Ansel. So that should be, yeah, this one. <laughs> I need to keep them separate. Uh, so... We're looking at appearances, it doesn't really look like your typical croissant in any way. So it doesn't really look like your typical croissant, but let's see, let's do a cross section. It feels a bit, it's not as light as I'd like. Okay, so we have some layering, definitely, but it's kind of dense. Okay, so this looks more like bread in the middle, I'd say, than a croissant, okay? So let's try it. Bon appetit. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like that strong coffee, but it's good palate cleanser, I guess. Okay, here's the thing, I can taste the like potential. I think if it was fluffier and like bigger and more in it, I think it would be much better because I can taste that like croissant taste, but it's not that strong. Um, yeah, it's just very dense, honestly. And like when you feel it too, like it feels like a bread, it doesn't feel like a croissant. 
The edges are crispy and flaky, I'll give it that. Mm. But yeah, it kind of loses it on the way. Next up ooh, is Joshua's croissant. So first up, by looking at it, so it has the shape down. It looks like a perfect croissant shape, but it's tiny. <laughs> So this was one of the doughs I really struggled with to roll out and when I rolled it out like it elongated on one way more than it could spread the other way. Uh, so that's why they're very petite and cute. So let's check the cross section. It's feeling quite dense. Yeah. So this one was the one I struggled most with the oven time. Sadly these are super dense and like the butter hasn't completely evaporated either so it's like not properly cooked and it feels a bit like gummy but we'll give it a taste. Okay taste wise this one tastes more like the croissant I'm after. It's more it's a bit more salty, I'd say. Maybe it's salt that um, was missing in the other one. But you can also taste that it's definitely underbaked. And uh, it's just very taste dense and it's not like a pleasant experience eating them because it's kind of like hard and yeah, not great, sadly, not great. Next one up is Julia Child. This one doesn't, it has a faint resemblance to the croissant. It's the right like moon shape. Okay, so this one was a bit tricky. The dough wasn't that super cooperative either. So let's do a cross section. Still pretty dense and maybe, yeah, it kind of looks a bit underbaked. But as you see on the top, it was already getting quite dark. Doing a taste test. To be completely honest, that doesn't taste much of anything. No. That one was definitely the worst one yet. That's um, like not even worth it. Next up we have Republique with the sponge dough, or what we want to call it. So this one is a bit darker, that's my fault, I burnt it. This one also feels like one of the lighter ones. So, yeah, let's do a cross section. This is more like it. We got air pockets, people. We got air pockets. Okay, this one got me excited. This is starting to look more like it. So, yeah, let's have a taste. Hmm. Okay, here's the verdict. So, this one definitely tastes more like how an actual croissant should taste. Also like the texture feels right, but here's the problem. One, you kind of get the burnt taste, which is annoying. Two, this one was one of those that I baked off two days ago and you can tell it's kind of a bit more chewy and um, dry than it would have been before. So I'd say this is probably the best one so far. Next up we have the one and only Claire Savis. So here it goes. This one was one of those that had a lot of butter pooling so it's kind of greasy on the bottom to be honest but it definitely looks like a croissant. This dough wasn't too bad to work with because this is when I kind of figured out that they needed to rest longer than what the recipe said. Uh, and I felt like this recipe was more like loose. Some of the recipes were like, oh, you have to roll it out to exactly X amount of inches and whatever. And this one was more like, yeah, roughly, it doesn't really matter. And that is how I like to work my life. Uh, like kind of a ballpark suggestions. Oh wow, this one definitely has the air pockets. This looks good. Okay, now we go in for the taste test. Remember, this is the one that I predicted should be the best one. 
we'll see. Okay, here's the thing about this one. The taste is there, it's too salty. It has a bit much salt, and I know the other ones use unsalted butter and then they add in salt. This one uses salted butter. And I think that's its downfall, sadly. It's good, don't get me wrong, and I think if you're gonna make like a sandwich, where you add in some more stuff, maybe add in some salad, I think this would be good balance. But, on its own, it's a bit salt, so if you're gonna eat a plain, maybe have some water tanned. But if you add maybe cream and jam, might be fine, or make like a proper sandwich out of it. We're down to our final croissant, our beloved Food 52 vegan croissant. So, I don't know how to feel about this one. I'm not sure if it's going to deliver. It definitely has the shape down, I'll give it that. Also, this feels like definitely one of the lighter ones, so that's interesting. Let's go in for cross section. Yeah. The lamination definitely worked. I have to say, it smells more on the sweet side. Like, sometimes when you go to, uh, like, hotels, I feel like, do this, they have those small croissants that they're, like, you just pop them into the oven that you buy the ready dough, and then they will sprinkle them with, like, icing sugar. It kind of has the same smell of that. And this one, since it's vegan, you can't do an egg glaze, so you did milk and some kind of syrup in it. Uh, so I'm a bit worried about that, but we're gonna taste it. Okay, it's good. Definitely on the sweeter side. Definitely on the sweet side. I don't know if it's just the like glaze or if it has higher sugar content in it than the others. I know there's a few differences uh, with the amount of sugar, but that's a bit too sweet. It's like this one and class one should have a baby and it would be perfect. But I'd say it doesn't have the like super classic croissant flavor and I'm guessing that's the vegan butter but it's definitely good and it holds up and it has better texture than most of the others. So now it's time for the final results. How do we rank these croissants? Well, I just think we have to start at the bottom and at the very bottom was Julia Child's croissants. They just, they didn't taste of anything. I predicted that they were gonna be the worst ones because they barely have any butter in them. More butter, Julia, more butter. If you're doing croissants, do them properly. The ones that were a little better, I'd say a lot better, but something in the execution probably went wrong, was Joshua Wiseman's. They, just weren't cooked and that's so weird because I had them in the oven for forever so I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was something in the proofing that went wrong. I'd say they have the potential but they just weren't properly cooked, okay? Position number four, we have Dominique Ansel's. This one, the texture just wasn't fluffy enough, they're kind of dense. They taste okay, but they're a bit dense, so they are what they are. Next up, oh, it's starting to get hard. Because all the top three, I would probably recommend these recipes. They're not perfect, none of them are perfect, but I think with croissants you kind of need to practice to get the technique down, and third place is going to Food 52's vegan croissants. Yeah. They got the lamination were good, they rose nice. They're quite pretty to look at, honestly. Um, and they taste really good. Bit sweet, so maybe uh, look over the recipe, see if you can cut down the sugar. If you, I know some people prefer the croissant sweet, go for this recipe, it's great. I felt like this was the dough that was the easiest to work with. I think the vegan butter has some kind of quality that is easier to work with. Uh, so yeah, I think these were really good. Now, this is so close, you guys. God, that's so hard. Okay, I think I made a decision. 
Nope, that's still disgusting. <laughs> okay, second place goes to Claire Savitz Spelt Croissants. They are really good. They're very, very good. And the butter is used to perfection, but it's too salt. That's my only critique, too salt. And the winner then goes to Republique. Bit burnt still, but I think that has the most like authentic croissant proper taste. It's, it smells perfect too. It had quite good rise for the lamination. This is my winner, Republique. Congratulations, you win the honor. At the end of the day, we have all learned that croissants are amazing. They're a pain in the butt to make, don't get me wrong, and especially when you're trying to make six different recipes at the same time. Um, yeah, they are a bit tricky, but at the end of the day, they are delicious. And I think that's what we have to take with us today. So all the recipes are down in the description. Like this video if you liked it, please leave a comment about which one you think look the best and subscribe to the channel if you want to. If you don't, well, sure. <laughs>